Charlie. We'll start um, the this afternoon session with Martin Zeman, who is going to give um, the fourth lecture on the a panoramic view of inner model theory for not so small or large panel. Yeah, thank you. So let me recap a little bit what I started at the very end of last lecture, and namely, I would like to explain how the comparison argument works, at least the one which is done by iterating out the uh, least disagreement. Yeah? And so I, if you remember, I just uh, took a very simple situation, and that means that was a comparison of two premise which were so simple that the iterations which gave rise, which, which just uh, were created in course of the comparison are linear and normal and normal means this yeah. uh, actually not let me go even back yeah, normal mean normal means this. So, so whenever we so whenever we apply an extender, so at the alpha, so this would be just the model M alpha, we apply the alpha extender, and the next extender, which is going to be applied. Is going to have critical point above the natural length, yeah? and the same thing at limit step. So whenever we apply an extender, we we always the critical point of the extender is going to be above all natural lengths of extenders we had so far, and yeah, and what this does is this this causes that we can yeah. So so the map. If we continue, so this is M alpha plus one, and if we continue the map, the map is just the identity on this piece. So we can, so if we know, of course, we can reconstruct the extender from this map. Yeah, that's that's this thing. Yeah, if it's just the extender. If I yeah, so if I take an extender form an ultra power and again derive derive an extender from the ultra power map, I get this derived extender is the original one. Yeah? So I can derive extender from this map, but I can actually derive this extender from the entire map because nothing is going to happen here. Yeah? So so that's what is here, what what this this line says. Yeah. So and namely we can discard this piece of the map because it's the identity. And that's going to be important. And the other thing which is important is that once we form an ultra power, yeah. so I have an index. Yeah, so the card remember the cardinal successor of the natural length in the ultra power is the index of this extender. Yeah. And this thing remain cardinal successor of new alpha in all models, all remaining models in the iteration. Yeah? So this is the first place. It is not a cardinal successor here because it indexes an extender. And if you think about it, an extender induces a cofinal map from cardinal successor of the critical point into the index. Yeah? So it's so so the index is not a cardinal in the mouse we are taking it from, but once we use it to form an ultra power, it will be a cardinal in all remaining mice. Yeah. And that comes from the coherency condition. Yeah. There is an agreement between these models and yeah. 
and acceptability. Yeah, so there is some argument which is needed to check this. Yeah, but 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 for us, that's what we are going to rely on. Yeah, and yeah. So and then okay. So and that's what I s mentioned last time. So we compare by the least disagreement, and we do the padded iteration. So if at any stage the object indexed by the object uh, which we are looking at uh, at the certain side. Yeah, so so we, ha we have a each, at each step of the iteration we are looking at pair of indices uh, of the least disagreement and we look at what what uh, what the mice index there. So if the object index at that stage is nothing then we do nothing. Yeah. And the comparison theorem says so now important thing still yeah this the the iterations uh, which came up from this mouse uh, are, mice are linear so the important thing is that this comparison must stop at the next regular cardinal or strictly below the next regular cardinal about the size of the two mice yeah that means what does it mean stop that means that the two extender sequences one of them is the initial segment of the other so they are they line up and so let's just I want to just give an idea how this argument works because that will be a motivation for introducing iteration trees yeah and so yeah so we argue by contradiction so we assume that yeah and now this is important we assume that it runs well I should have said at least lambda yeah or at least lambda st in this case it doesn't matter yeah at least lambda steps yeah so we we can form the direct limit still yeah it will be well founded so in particular we so we just think that these two iterations have length lambda plus one and so we have the models there which are indexed by lambda and then we do what we usually do so so we just miniaturize the situation yeah um, maybe I erase this now yeah I'm which line is it second uh, oh yeah thank you yeah that's a typo yeah so I should yeah so that that should be h theta here so I now I erase this and yeah. so what you yeah so yeah so think of it uh-huh Uh huh. Okay. Not better. Better. Yeah. So. Yeah. So this is my lambda, and somewhere here I have. So look at one of these iterations i. Yeah and so we take an elementary substructure of some h theta which is big which has everything of interest especially these iterations inside and is transitive below lambda yeah so that's my lambda prime and then then we collapse it so we get yeah so here i get some structure h here i get this h theta and I get an elementary embedding with critical point lambda bar which sends lambda bar to lambda yeah? and now if you so this is my i now i is collapsed to some i bar but if you inspect it a little bit you will see that this i bar is an initial segment of the entire iteration i yeah? and even the lambda bar model still and they still agree on the model with index lambda bar yeah 
So this is my this is my elementary map. Yes. So, so that's what I'm saying here. So if I collapse, I will get say this iteration i bar. But that's yeah be because this is transitive, and this mouse is small. I mean, it's just one can just check that this is the same as restricting this iteration to a lambda bar plus one. And then, so in particular, the model is with index lambda bar is the same. And now you can think of it. The, so the crucial observation is the following, that if I look at the iteration map, so, so I can factor, I have my mouse m here, and I, I can factor this iteration into two pieces. First goes from the mouse to this index lambda bar, yeah, so that's my first segment of length lambda bar, and then the rest. And now the main observation, crucial observation, is that this iteration map here is the same as sigma, this collapsing map. And uh, okay, so that requires a little argument, but let me just say, you see how this is a direct limit. So the, this map just stretches this direct limit up yeah, and keeps the initial segment of the maps where they are. So this is an easy exercise to check. But that's important because now you see that now you got rid of the dependence on i. Yeah? So this, I have just this, this model m, and now I don't, it doesn't matter what extenders I was using on this tail end. Yeah? I know the map. It's just the, this inverse of the collapsing map restricted to the lambda bar model. Yeah? And, so, and that's the same on the other side for n. And also, by inspecting the iterations, you will see that the two models agree on subsets of lambda bar. Yeah? So that, that because these iterations are normal. So, so once they reach, so in other words, the way you would argue that the model, at, because remember now, we have this requirement that the extenders are weakly amenable, and the critical points on this tail end are above lambda bar. So the power set at this point of lambda bar is the same as the power set at the very last model. But the last two models agree below a cardinal. Yeah? So, so this, is, this follows from acceptability and the fact that your critical points are big. And this is now crucial information yeah, you have. So the two mice agree on the power set of lambda bar. Yeah, lambda bar is the critical point actually of these two iteration maps because it's the critical point of the of sigma. Yeah, and both iteration maps are the same. Yeah, on this power set, and so that means that now you can use what we said before. You can just use these maps to derive the extender used at this stage. Uh, which, yeah, so you can use these extenders which you applied to the lambda model and you, you show that they are compatible. That means that one of them is uh, initial segment of the other. Yeah? So remember, this is the restriction to the coordinates. So whichever of these things is smaller. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so we have a pair of compatible extenders and then, and that's a contradiction. And why is it a contradiction? Because you, two things can happen. Yeah, either one of them is properly longer than the other one. But then remember, yeah. So this alpha is an index. What we said, the index stays a cardinal in all later models. But and this is the place where we are using. Yeah. So that's the place where we are using coherence from the definition of premise. And then then we use this initial segment condition, which says that this initial segment must be, yeah, the shorter one must be on the sequence of the mouse on the other side, yeah? But, yeah, so let me, 
Yeah, so say alpha i lambda bar is shorter than alpha i alpha j. Yeah. Yeah, so this is lambda bar and now on the j side we take an ultra power using this extender so this will be empty but we will have an agreement all the way here. Yeah? Yeah, and that means that this, by the initial segment condition, this extender is just an initial segment of this extender is on the same sequence. So in the ultra power, this thing still must index an extender. But on the other side, we had zero there, right? And uh, that's a contradiction, yeah, because in the end, once we have an extender here, this ordinal is collapsed, it's no longer a cardinal. But on the other side of the iteration, it wasn't collapsed, yeah? It must remain a cardinal because we used, we used extender with that, with that index, yeah? So, so, so that's, so once again, on the one side, we used the shorter index and therefore this shorter index must remain a cardinal in all remaining models. On the other side, we use a bigger index, but then the initial segment condition tells us that the shorter index still must index an extender in the remaining models. So it cannot be a cardinal in any of those models. Yeah. So that's what gives us a contradiction. So the only way, so the only thing can happen that the two extenders are the same but that's not possible because we are iterating by the least disagreement. So those two extenders wouldn't uh, appear on the comparison. Yeah? So this is a very simple setting, but all of these comparison arguments uh, work this way. Yeah? So, so the s same one will work for iteration trees, basically. Just that now we will not have a linear iteration, but we have to look at what happens along certain branches. So, okay, so now we are at iteration trees. So let me uh, still, if we return back to the comparison, so here is the most uh, immediate reason why iteration, w well, why something like iteration trees are needed, or why linear iteration cannot work if we have an overlap, yeah, because because now remember, now we would have a situation, for example, like this, that we say we have an extender like this, and okay, we form an ultra power, and then later we have an extender which overlaps. So say we take an extender like this. Yeah? And now we cannot really reconstruct, now, and now, okay, and say the rest of the iteration is nice as before, so, so all critical points are, say, above the natural length of this one. Yeah. But if we try to run the same argument, we try to, yeah, so we take some set, below the natural length of the first extender and now we are trying to reconstruct the extender from the map what happens is that once i take a subset here and i map it up using the entire iteration map this the top part of the iteration is killed so at this point i am just applying the identity all information above is the about this set is killed and now this this extender comes that will take over yeah so so now we are going to retrieve the information about the second extender and not about the first one yeah. so the image of that set 
Yeah, if I am asking if A is inside the image of this set, is the same as asking about whether A is in the image of its intersection with kappa 1. Yeah? So if I, if I derive the extender, I actually, what I am reconstructing is just some initial segment of the second extender and not the first extender. Yeah? You may think that, okay, this is just some unlucky situation and we may be able using some ways around to arrange still a linear comparison, but there are other reasons, like reasons which do not depend on the particular way you do iterations. Yeah, so the most probably the most well-known is this one. Say if you want to, say you want to build a big enough model such that you have a wooden cardinal inside it and a measurable above. Yeah, and then yeah, such a model satisfies uh, pi 1, 2 determinacy by Martin and Steele and therefore cannot have delta 1, 3 well ordering of reals. But, but uh, models with li linear iterations always have the delta 1, 3 well ordering of real. So if there is time, I will go to that. Yeah. So, and even if we go below, just <coughs> at the level of strong cardinals, there was an argument of Woodin that you can have a situation just with two strongs and the K has a very high complexity, higher than can be achieved by linear iterations and uh, and there is a similar argument due to steel yeah. so so there are a lot of indications that there are you cannot do some tricks to get around but you need something new and that's and it turns out that the iteration trees do the job yeah. so so let's just let's just look at what iteration trees are and so now the iterations will not be linear but the it so the meter iteration maps will not go along just an ordinals, but it will they will go along a tree structure. So here is the tree structure, and it's a specific type of tree. Yeah. So you the tree ordering it's a tree on ordinals. A tree ordering is just consistent with the usual ordering on ordinals. We take zero to be the root. And then, uh, this is important, uh, namely the branches are closed sets. Yeah? So whenever I have, so if I have this tree structure, and when I have a branch, yeah, which I would call this, yeah, I, I, I write either ordinary t or script t, I think I'm not very consistent. Uh, then then this is, yeah, so those are all nodes in the tree below alpha, that's a closed unbounded subset of alpha. Yeah? So that's important. So it's a specific type of tree and that's kind of a tree you will be generating when you are trying to iterate the extenders yeah, in a tree-like fashion. So, so let's just let's just see how you do it yeah so you start so what is an iteration tree on a structure m so we start from an m which we declare to be m0 yeah? and then and then we pick an extender and for and form an ultra power yeah so what I'm actually defining is something which is for called normal maximal iteration tree. Yeah. Uh, normality is important. Yeah. I mean, this maximal is for the purpose of fine structure, but there are other kinds of trees, not just maximal, which are used. So I'm just using, so this is a basic, basic type of tree which is used. Yeah. So, okay, so here is, so the first extender is taken from the, uh, or the naught is from the, the model zero. The first one is taken from the first model, and now 
I am not going to apply it necessarily to the first model, but I I have a rule how to continue. Yeah. So the rule is the following, namely I apply it to the f very first model such that it makes sense to apply it. Yeah. So now if you for you see we have this coherence condition for premise. So what happens is that say if I have a premouse, the situation I will be having is, well, which has to be proved inductively, that if I have two premise, in the normal iteration, they will be also typically, they, so, so they, these natural lengths grow, and And the models agree if this is my index of the extender, then the model so the, mo the this model below the in from this point on all models agree below the index of m alpha yeah from this point on all of the models agree below the index of nu beta, so always from the model where we start the rest of the iteration always all models agree below the index of that model. So we have kind of an increasing agreement. So if I take extender, say kappa beta, what I'm going to do, I'm going to apply it to the first model. Yeah, so yeah, maybe I should uh, relabel this so that this is, this is consistent with uh, what I have, uh, what is on the slide, so, so. Where? Kappa is smaller than the natural length, that's correct. Yeah, so here is, so, yeah, so this is Xi, this is alpha, this is critical point kappa alpha, this is natural length of uh, the Xi extender, and I want that kappa alpha is smaller. Yeah, the reason for this is that these models agree. So, at least up to this point, the extender, yeah, so the extender knows how to measure sets in this segment of the model. But by acceptability, I mean, so it may happen that this model has more subsets of kappa alpha than are in this segment where we have agreement. But by acceptability, all of those sets appear above the index. So what I do is, I, if there are, I mean, I just have to truncate the model, yeah? So, so if this extender, is not total on this model. I just take the sh longest initial segment of the model such that that extender is still total so that I am able to take the ultra power. Huh? And so this is, this is the extender I am getting. Yeah? So for example, yeah, in this case, I take the extender. Say if the critical point of this extender is below the natural length of this extender, I apply this extender to some initial, to the longest initial segment of this model to which I am able to apply it. Yeah. So really I have, a, so the map may not go, if, so if this extender is total on this model, then the map goes from M0, but if not, then it just, then I shorter M0, the map actually goes from some shorter model, which I call M2 star, or that's how it is called in the literature. Yeah and then it goes to M2. Yeah. Yeah. So, 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 yeah, so, so, so in words, yeah, so we always take an extender from the model, apply it to the first model, it makes sense to, but not really to the first model, but, but to the longest initial segment of the first model. 
and then we take the fine ultra power yeah? and then and that's all yeah and the rest is as before the map, maps now we are getting a tree structure this way yeah so possibly And then, of course, uh, the question is what to do. Then, after omega steps, we reach a limit stage. Now, remember, there is still an issue because you may ask what happens if, we, if I generate something like this. Then I don't have a branch. Yeah? But, but this seems to happen. In order to this happen, you need very large cardinals. So, so in all situations we are considering, we will have some tree of limit length, and there is a, the tree has a chance to have a branch, and then. So at limit steps, yeah. So the definition I am giving is kind of static. So so I am not defining the tree as it has been created, like I was describing here. But rather, I'm saying the tree is given, and I'm describing the relationship. So, so, yeah, the maps along the branches commute, and every branch has only finitely many truncation points. Now, this looks kind of unlikely, but uh, that already actually happens in all situations of our interest. Yeah, and because there are only finitely many, I can always take a direct limit. So, yeah. So if I have if alpha is a limit, then I have this branch. There are only finitely many truncation points, but the tail end does not have any truncation points, so I have maps on those models, so I can take the direct limit. So that's what it does. Yeah. And that's it. Yeah. So I'm just saying again, uh, yeah, what this just says what I already said. Yeah, that uh, that uh, this thing. Yeah, the choice this way, the least possible model guarantees that the extender I'm applying is just an extender over this initial segment, and uh, yeah, the second condition. Uh, guarantees that uh, that it is still an extender over this m star which is obtained by truncation and i'm just taking the longest possible initial segment because i want to discard as little information as i want yeah and so and but also there are other kinds of trees so re look i mean i don't really need to take alpha uh, star to be the least possible i could i could uh, yeah, so the model to which I apply, I, as long as kappa alpha is below the natural length, I can form the ultra power. But if I do this, then the ultra, then the extenders along the branches will be non-overlapping. Yeah, and that's why we are doing that, because once we know that the extenders are non-overlapping, we can just run this argument, this comparison argument, exactly the same way. Yeah. So let's just call lambda alpha the index of the alpha extender. Yeah. So then let me just repeat. Yeah, we talk about this in this linear case. It is two here too. So if I take extender alpha, then in all later models, the cardinal successor of the natural length of the alpha extender is going to be exactly the index. Yeah? And this yeah, critical points are ascending and the extenders are non-overlapping. And this is this yeah, again is because of the choice, because of taking uh, C, because of taking this alpha star to be the least one. Yeah? That's an easy check. And let's just forget about those two for the moment, and I will return to that. So now we can try to run the comparison argument for trees. Yeah. And 
And now we have to state the comparison theorem a bit more carefully, yeah? because now we have trees. So, uh, so I'm saying this. I have again, I have two mice, lambda regular above both, and I have a pair of non-terminal comparison. Yeah? So non-terminal comparison tree means that at the end of the tree, the two structures are not yet lined up. So there is a disagreement still. And I'm assuming that both trees have length lambda. And then the conclusion is that at least one of the trees cannot have a cofinal branch. So this is a very careful statement. Yeah? So you can have a situation. So what does this say? Well, suppose I am comparing these mice and the comparison last lambda is long lambda, or has length lambda. Yeah? It lasts lambda many steps. That may happen, yeah? But I'm, that may happen as long as I don't know how to get branches at lambda. And the argument is exactly the same I showed. The only thing is that we work on these branches. So yeah, if yeah, so if they do have branches, yeah, then then we have the lambda model. And the point now is then so we look at this branch below the node lambda, that's the last node on the, of the tree. And we work with that branch exactly the same way as we worked with this linear iteration. So that requires a little bit of extra checking because now the extenders do not come from the, st are not applied to the same models where they come from, but that doesn't matter. Yeah? The two facts, yeah, so the main point is that we can factor, if you remember, we were factoring the, we were factoring the iteration. This lambda bar was, was this, length of the collapse yeah? and the point is why we can do it yeah so let's look at it once again here we have lambda here we have my tree here, here we have our tree and here is the collapse structure the point is here is the branch through this tree That branch has its collapse here. Yeah. And now all members of the branch are below this lambda bar, which is a critical point. So if I map them, they are not moved. So if this one is inside the collapse of the branch, yeah, then it is also inside the big branch. Yeah. So in other words, Yes, yes. So this, so this thing, this smaller branch is a closed, unbounded subset of lambda bar, and the members are just sent to the big branch. So, so lambda bar turns out to be a limit point of the big branch. And now we use the requirement on the branches that they are closed. So this lambda bar is going to be inside this branch. So, yeah, so this is going to be inside. Okay, this is just uh, inside the branch through my tree. So that's so we can factor along this. Yeah. So then that tells us that we can factor the iteration map through this lambda bar. Yeah? And so all we did with the linear iteration before, we just do with this, with this particular branch. Yeah. That's the only difference. And the rest of the argument goes as before, yeah? because, because we have agreement with the model, uh, uh, between the later models, exactly as yeah, uh, we had before. And we said that the index of a used extender remains cardinal in the rest. And we have the initial segment condition, so we can we can just argue exactly as before. The only difference is just to show that we can factor through the branch. And so, so if we want to make this work, we need to be able to iterate. 
So I say what a, a lambda normal iteration strategy is a mouse, sorry, is a, is a function uh, which to each iteration three of length smaller than lambda assigns a cofine of well-founded branch through T. Yeah. And you can easily guess that this is the most important task now in this area just to come up with iteration strategies because they will tell us how to compare. Yeah, and then we say that M is lambda normally iterable if such an iteration strategy exists. And so now we can improve the comparison theorem. So now if we know that those two premises are lambda plus one iterable, where lambda is uh, regular above the size of these two mice, then the comparison must terminate at some stage which is strictly below lambda. Yeah? And that comes from that argument. Yeah, because now I can start iterating them by the least disagreement. If I don't stop at lambda, I am still able to find these branches because the strategy will tell me what these two branches at the end are. And then we just run this comparison argument from before and get a contradiction. Yeah? So I'm not even, so we have really the, the two iteration trees must be terminal before we reach lambda. So, yeah, so, and you can imagine that this is a very useful tool and it's used for almost everything in this theory and in particular, among other things, it is used to establish properties of premise, yeah? And the two important properties, fine structural properties, I want to mention are solidity and universality of the standard parameter. So I don't want to define solidity, that's technical, but there is an important consequence to solidity and that's this. It says that the iteration maps send standard parameters to standard parameters. So that's all for us what we need. But solidity also yields the following crucial properties of comparison I mentioned last time. And uh, so you probably Remember, because, uh, yeah, so now, re now we are able to f do truncations along the, the branches, yeah? So if we compare two mice, and now what if we, yeah, and at the end, yeah, I have mouse M and N, and now we compare them, so we have some iterations, and at the end we get m prime and n prime. So these are s some iteration trees which uh, arise from the comparison, and say these are the corresponding uh, branches at the end. And now suppose we just did form, perform truncations on both branches. So we just chopped off a piece of model here and here also. So so the last, so these structures at the end lose some information about both mice, and that doesn't look very good. So that, uh, yeah. So there is a bit of worry that if we do this, then that's going. The entire process is going to be useless. So the, I think the main, the key observation, and that came with Mitchell when I was talking about the idea of Baldwin and how Mitchell uh, worked it out, that came already there. Yeah? Yeah, if we compare, if we have a terminal iter comparison and all initial segments of these mice are solid, then we cannot truncate on both. At most one can have truncation. Yeah? And that's, that's, that's a very, surprising thing, but in a sense it's a natural thing if we want the theory to work. So, so one side doesn't have an iteration. And this, by the way, uh, yeah, there can be more than one truncations. Uh, yeah, oh, there can be truncations along this, uh, outside of this branch also. Yeah? 
and there yeah so and there may, may be more truncations on this branch if there is one but only finitely many so yeah so okay so suppose we have a truncation here and now we know that one of these is an initial segment of the other so can you guess which one is going to be an initial segment of which? Or which one is going to turn up longer, say? Right, this one, yeah? And the idea is, but this, if this happens, this tells me that this mouse is bigger. So, so I can afford to chop off a piece of it, yeah, because I'm chopping off only as little as I have to, and I'm still going to win. And there is a fine structural expression of this. And maybe, yeah, the, uh, why is this true? The argument is similar to the comparison argument again, yeah? And the reason is that if we don't, if we chop on both sides, then we are yeah so so now it now comes this property of iterations i mentioned here the projector if we if the critical points are above the projector then they remain the same yeah? this projector remain the same in all later models and these later models are never going to be sound and remember if something, the necessary condition for a model to be an initial segment of the other one is soundness. So if we truncate here, the last model is not sound, so it cannot be an initial segment of this one. They may be equal. Yeah. And that's, that's, that's the proof, yeah? So why, so why we cannot truncate on both sides? Because then, if we did, n neither of the models is sound, so they are equal. But then we can show that if we look at the last truncation point on each side, then the maps from the then the maps are also equal because the by solidity I mean the projectum, yeah, so the result of the last truncation is sound. And so the model is uh, the last truncation, yeah, so it's just the whole of the project to together with standard that parameter under the scholem function and this property is going to be preserved by the iteration maps yeah so in the end by solidity of the initial segments the iteration maps are going to send standard parameters to the standard parameters so the range of the iteration map in the end is just going to be the scholem whole of the projectum together with the standard parameter of the last model on each side, but the last models are the same. Yeah, so that tells me that the result of the last truncation on each side is the same model, and the iteration maps are the same as well. So exactly as in the comparison argument, we can retrieve the extenders and conclude that they are compatible. But but that gives a contradiction as in the comparison argument. Yeah. So all of the thing, all these things uh, nicely fit together. Of course, to prove this, it's just a long induction on the length of this mice. So you have to prove all of these things together. Yeah. And then we have, so once we have that, yeah, so, so now that gives you the notion of, so that's called also the Jensen ordering, pre -well ordering on the mice. Yeah, so this, and so and the next, or, and the last important characteristic is the universality of the standard parameter. And what it take, uh, says is the following, that if I look at the projectum of my pre-mouse and just take the, Scholem Hall, I put star here because it depends on which projectum it is, yeah, so just one should put the appropriate number there. So, so if you are collapsing, you may, 
you may lose subsets of the projectum yeah, because you are forming a smaller model. So the universality tells me that we are not losing any subsets of the projectum. Yeah. Yeah, so all of these things can be follow from iterability, but, uh, but maybe yeah, they are internal to premise. So you don't really need full iterability to establish them. And that's an important thing because often you cannot have full iterability of the models you are building. But yeah, so you can just take the mouse, take some elementary substructure which is countable, collapse everything to countable. Now all you need is to iterate this countable mice and you know that the iteration, the comparison of countable mice terminates below omega one. You establish all internal properties you want and then you use the inverse to the collapsing map to push it up. And so, and there is a stronger notion of iterability which is needed to do this. Yeah. I have to say, Farmer Schlutzenberg announced he can do it without, but I think I haven't seen the proof written up. So for the moment, let's say this is the official version. Yeah, so, so we require iterability not only for linear iterations, but for linear compositions of iteration, normal iteration trees. So they look like this, yeah. So that would mean that I allow iteration, normal trees of length at most smaller than lambda and linear compositions of length at most mu. And the relevant notion is this, omega one plus one, omega one iterable. Yeah? So I allow iteration trees of length omega one plus one and compose them. So that means they are at, yeah, and compose them of compositions of length smaller than omega one. And from that we can get all desired properties. And with that, we can define what the core of the mouse is. So you see, if you have a mouse and now you iterate it above the projectum, you can, by doing, if, even if you have two extenders, you can just, they, if you alternatively somehow apply them, that creates a pattern of zeros and ones. Say. So you can encode whatever you want into that mouse. So the point of the core is that the core of a mouse is just a thing which carries only the hard information, yeah? the, the, the up kind of the absolute information about this mouse. I mean, no random information there. And how we get it? We just go to the ultimate project room, take the hole with the standard parameter and collapse it. Yeah? And yeah, they have the same ultimate project room. They have the same power set of the project room. So the cardinal successor is the same in both and core is sound and solid. Yeah, and so the, this core is something which is typically an initial segment of our model. And the last thing I want to say is this is a condensation lemma. Yeah? Again, Yeah, so, so remember we have a condensation lemma for L which tells us that we condense to an initial segment of the hierarchy. Now here, of course, this M bar may have a different extender sequence from this one. Yeah. But if this happens, if we have a map which is, if we have an M embedding which is the identity on the N plus first projectum, then, and I should have said, instead of sound, I should have said N sound, so N sound would be weaker. Then this is actually, M bar is actually an initial segment of M. So we can get a form of condensation 
for this premise which is of the same kind as we have for L. Yeah? The corollary is that the core and M agree up to the tau, which is the common cardinal successor of the project. Tone. So not, as before I mentioned, not only that the cardinal successor and power set are the same, the actual hierarchy is the same. So if we core down, we still keep the model up to the cardinal successor of the project. Tone. Okay, so in the last three minutes, I try to explain how you build the model. Yeah, so what you, it's not like L. If you build L, you just go linearly from the bottom to the top. But here you don't. You just go up for a while and then you go down. Yeah? And I refer to a vague term certified. And there are various kinds of construction depending on what we mean by certified. Yeah, so, and that's the relationship. We first built NXI and then MXI would be the core, yeah? So the idea is that MXI should be an initial segment of something. But we like, we go a little bit, but the, it goes like this. It goes a little bit up, then we core down, then it again goes up, then we core down. So it's highly nonlinear. So we are building a sequence of extender sequences, yeah? start from nothing and at the successor step th this is this looks horrible but what it says is that if I have if my current pre mouse looks like doesn't have a top extender but there is some extender in V which I can which have a chance to be one yeah so if it is certified and gives me a pre mouse then I take such an extender with the smallest possible natural length and put it on. And that's my NXC plus one. And otherwise, I just go up one level in constructible hierarchy. Yeah? So this top, if it had a top extender, it becomes the last, ex so I increase by one in the constructible hierarchy. My last extender here will be the next to the last in the next nose and the last extender will be zero. Yeah? And at the limit steps, we take something which is called limin. And that's related to the properties of cores. So, yeah. And namely, remember, yeah, we said that core, the core agree with the mouse. So, so you, uh, those are my models and C, yeah, and this is my, I think well, let's just call it an eta. Yeah. And this is, okay, and what I have is, Along these lines, I look at the smallest projectum. So I compute projecta of all of these models and I look at the smallest one. And then from that point on, I look, I compute the cardinal successors. Uh, they will be all the same. Yeah? So the structures agree up to this. Yeah? Then I can do, yeah, so this is my Xi. Then I, if I go a little bit closer to Xi, for, for example, from this point on, I compute the smallest project on, suppose it is here, and then I compute all cardinal successors of this row in all mice, and they will agree on this. So as, as we approach Xi, we get a more and more agreement between these models. So that's what the lim sup I, lim inf is. So I think I got it right, lim inf, yeah? So we just take this eventual value, which is the agreement, yeah. And that's it, yeah. And then we do the same at the ordinals, and that's our model. And of course, you face all kinds of problems. The next extender may not be unique. The fine structure may break down we lose too many sets during the collapsing, yeah? 
So the iterability and these properties I named take care of all of this. Using iterability, you can show that the next extender is unique, and we mentioned that the fine structure doesn't break down. And the properties, of course, tells you that you actually don't lose these sets, and the real halting model is a proper class model. Yeah, because remember, each time, for example, let's try omega. Each time we project to omega, we introduce a new subset of omega. But then we keep this for the rest. Yeah, we will never, uh, yeah, uh, this set is being kept because, because when forming the cores, we are not losing any sets. Yeah? So once we introduce, once we project to omega, we introduce this set, but that set is now on all of this, by the fact that the models go up and down, that set is there forever. So we can do this only two to the omega many times, because there are only that many sets. And from that point on, the hierarchy will never project to omega. Yeah? And uh, so this, as, uh, and the same happens at bigger cardinals. So as we approach infinity, the agreement is going to be bigger and bigger. And therefore, these models are going to be proper class models. And because of soundness of these models, M, we automatically have GCH. Yeah. And, okay, so I should stop. So let me just say, so I had a little bit more, but I was too slow. Uh, yeah, we can get... Models with various kinds of patterns there, uh, but so let me just say what certified means. So there are various ways we can certify. The easiest way is when certified means that we have actually a extender on V such that F is a restriction of that extender to the primo. So that's the strongest form, but it uses the assumption that you have large cardinals in V. So for example, you need wooden cardinals in V if you want to get wooden cardinals in your model. And the best uh, result is very old by nowadays by uh, Niemann and it's about in the region of wooden limit of wooden cardinals. The model of this kind is still very useful. Yeah? And then there are KC constructions and I wrote a definition of a background certificate uh, which is kind of complicated, but the point is, so now we again have an extender F star on the background, which is an extender in V, but it is only an extender on some small structure, and there is some restricted agreement with our extender F. So this F star is not necessarily an extender in V, and that we may not have any large cardinals in V. Still, this thing picks all kind of large cardinals properties that may be hidden in V, like if you collapse, for example, these large cardinals. And so this KC construction is used to co build K. So if you make an anti-large cardinal assumption, so again, I mean, these models have been against build, but they don't, there are no known construction which that reach as far as the full background certified construction. But if you, make, uh, if you make an assumption that there is no inner model with a wooden cardinal, then the KC construction converges and you can build something, uh, you can build some smallest possible big hull inside this KC. So you, you take some big sets, yeah, the KC will satisfy some form of weak covering and you just look at large sets, large subsets of ordinals, and you take holes and intersect them all. And by doing this, you will get something which is called K, the true core, that's, called, that's the Steele's core model. And Steele's proved then that it's rigid. So these theorems which we had for Todd Jensen core models and other kinds of Mitchell's core model, yeah? it's rigid, it's generically absolute and there is a weak covering theorem by Mitchell Schimmerling and Steele, which reads exactly the same way as before. So I should give at least one theorem of mine. So here it is. Uh, so we proved square at some point in this kind of models. 
So an immediate application is that, say, if squared Aleph Omega fails, then you get an inner model of Woodin cardinals. Yeah? But by today, one gets much stronger. So there is a method of core model induction invented by Woodin, which, which can iterate this somehow, but it brings in methods from, in, uh, from descriptive set theory. So this can be significantly pushed up. Yeah. So I should probably stop. I have. A, I wanted to give you some idea how now the proving iterability works in these models, but that was probably unrealistic. So, but thank you for your patience. Yeah.